Welcome to the second official loop of the week video. Um, I wasn't originally planning on doing this, but I realized in the past week that whenever I've been looking through YouTube at uh, different looping pedals that I've been interested, even the ones that say they're their demo or a tutorial, often aren't. Um, so I wanted to do a little demo of the pedal that actually covers all the features, hopefully all of them, hopefully I don't forget anything. Um, and is actually useful to people who might be looking for that. I'm sure there are some good videos out there, but a lot of the ones that I've seen um, have not been very good, so I wanted to do this, and we'll do a really short, simple video, uh, simple loop on this video. But first of all, I just want to say what, what comes in the uh, package when, if you were going to buy a Ditto Looper, this is pretty much all you get. Um, it's this pedal. This is actually the original volume knob. Um, I just, just this morning, this afternoon, I swapped out this volume knob for one of these bad boys. Um, you can get them at Radio Shack. Actually, a friend on uh, Facebook recommended this. Uh, they get two to a pack, and they're three bucks. Uh, so now I guess I have a backup. I don't expect this to break. It's kind of a monster. Um, and so that's easy to swap out. Um, and don't be afraid. This pops off. It's on there pretty tight, but if you pinch with your fingers and pull really hard, it'll come off. So, it comes with the, just the pedal, a really short uh, startup guide, it's just one square sheet of paper, and that's it. Um, gives you the basic functions of the pedal. These two little pads, I don't know if you can tell if those are pads, but these are rubber 3M strips. Um, they're not so good on carpet, it moves really easily, but if you're on a uh, slick surface, uh, plastic, metal, uh, I happen to be using this on top of another loop pedal, which is made of metal, and it sticks pretty well. So it comes with that. All it is on the pedal is uh, an input, a quarter inch jack input, a quarter inch out, and then here's the power. Um, it does not come with a power supply, and it does not take a 9 volt battery. You would think maybe it could take a 9 volt battery. To me, that's not that big of an issue, because I'd be afraid that the power would run out at a live show if I was using a 9 volt. Um, but so you need to have a power supply. Uh, it has to be center negative, uh, 9 volts and at least 100 milliamps. If it's more than 100 milliamps, that is okay. Um, but if it's less, I don't think it'll power the, power the supply. You can actually find this information online. Uh, TC Electronic has a full user manual in PDF format that you can download or, or just look at online. Um, it's pretty easy to find. I would just Google search it. So that's that. And uh, now let's just go through some of the features, hopefully all of the features of the Ditto Looper. So as long as your guitar is plugged in, uh, both the input and the output, you will hear it through your amp. And even if the power supply is not plugged in, you will still hear your guitar. Um, TC Electronic brags that this color, uh, I mean this, this pedal does not color your sound in any way. And uh, so far, I haven't found anything to report um, the opposite. But so anyway, you can, just, you can play as much as you want, and then if you figured out something you want to play for your loop, one tap of the, of the button here will uh, we'll start the record process for your, your original loop. Press it again and it starts playing back. The green light means that it's just in playback mode and you are playing and not recording anymore. It'll flash at the beginning of each cycle. Press again and the light will turn red and that will mean I'm in overdub mode. Press it again and you're back into play, play mode. And one neat thing about this pedal, I'm going to adjust the volume while I talk over it. Is that even with this size pedal with just one button on it, it has an undo redo function. So the last thing I did was lay down this bass line. Sounds something like that. Then I could take that out and put it back in if I want to, here, just by holding down the button while it's playing. See, so that lower bass part is now out. 
if I didn't like it, I could re-record it, but I can also bring it back in. Same process, while it's playing, hold down the button. So now that bass part is in again. To me, a more useful way of doing this, though, is if you want to put a drum beat in your song. So maybe this would be for like the chorus. If I want to go to the verse, I still want the other loop, but not the drum beat. So hopefully that makes that makes sense. And uh, I stopped the loop by pressing it twice uh, in fairly rapid succession. I would say eighth notes in whatever uh, song you're playing is probably the most efficient or the most useful um, denomination of note to do that. Largely because it. This is the tricky thing. If you want the loop to stop right at the beginning of your phrase, you need to make your second foot tap be the, the downbeat of that phrase. So here we go again. I'm say I want to go on to like another section of the song. still haven't really mastered that. It's uh, kind of somewhat counterintuitive when you're used to just pressing once to make um, a loop stop. But hopefully I'll get it eventually. Uh, what else is there? You hold down the button to erase the entire loop. Um, if you hold it down while the loop is, is you can only do this while the loop is uh, not playing. If you only hold it down once while the loop is playing, it'll play the beginning of the loop for a little while. And then then cut out. But so what I would recommend doing is tapping it twice or turning your volume all the way down so that no one hears that loop. So now the loop is gone. You see there's no light emanating right now. So I think that's pretty much it. And I hope this was helpful. If you got any questions, um, please feel free to leave them in the, below the video.